So predictably, you plug in the pi over two, do a little bit of work there, you should get a zero over zero initially. So just because this is going to a pi over two, as long as we get the zero over zero, we can still go ahead with our little shortcut, the L'Hopital's rule. So you're still gonna take your derivative. And if you understand that, it's a pretty easy little guy here. Derivative of two X is just two, pi will go away. You'll get the negative sine of X for the derivative of your denominator. Uh, the sine of pi over two is the Y coordinate up here. That's a one. We want it to be negative. So we should get negative two for that slope, okay? So that's L'Hopital's rule. Uh, seven and eight, we'll just do number seven. Just because we have another way to deal with this, it's a little bit easier. But understand, x is going to infinity. Actually, let's do this for me just so we don't get too many questions and make sense. We change this into a plus sign. It doesn't matter, but it'll be a little more intuitive to you if we just change it into a plus. Do we agree that if I let x be one, with a, we'll go one million, isn't it? 1 million squared times 2 plus 1 million, isn't that a huge, 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 huge number? And if I continue to add these, wouldn't this numerator continue to just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Yeah. Well, wouldn't the denominator do the exact same thing? So this is another version of an indeterminate form. Because of that, we could use L'Hopital's rule to kind of go through and figure out what this limit is. So if I now go through, limit as x goes to infinity, take your derivatives, 1 plus 4x over a 6x plus 5. These are now both lines, right? One has a y-intercept of 1 with a slope of 4. The other one has a y-intercept of 5 with a slope of 6. So these both take off towards infinity. So both of these would get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're still indeterminate. That means we can do one more. And we now get 4 over 6, no longer indeterminate. We need to make a conclusion here. We know the limit of any constant is that constant. So the answer to this question is 2 thirds. That's your answer. Remember, we can do it with infinity over infinity, but remember the beginning of the year, and we've seen this a little bit on and off throughout the course of the year. If our, lim if our uh, degrees are the same, they're both squared, we have shortcuts for these. And if they're the same, isn't it just their coefficients? So notice how it was 2 over 3. Same thing we just got right here by going through that little rule. Long term, you don't want to do L'Hopital's rule with this. Like number 8, you could if you want do L'Hopital's rule. But isn't it easier to understand from the beginning of the year, I have a 1 on top, a squared on the bottom. Remember how this would give us a limit of 0 because your denominator will always be going faster than the numerator. Okay, so long term, we just wanted to know that rule versus L'Hopital's rule for these. All right, next page. Uh, where it says comparing the rates at which functions grow. So real quick, we just reviewed these a little bit. If I'm gonna do all these infinity rules, if the degree on top is bigger than the degree on the bottom, then you're gonna get an infinity, assuming there's no signs with the coefficients of these. If the degree on the bottom is bigger, you're gonna get zero. And if the degrees are the same, then you're just gonna look at their coefficients, one divided by one, so old ideas. Here's how we're gonna now do these to determine which function grows faster. So F is gonna be said to grow faster as long as, so F will grow faster if, as we set up an infinity, if our numerator is growing faster, just like up here, the reason we get infinity, doesn't an X squared increase faster than a regular old X? So the reason we get infinity is because the numerator is growing faster than your denominator. So F is gonna grow faster if we set up a limit and our limit is infinity. F is growing faster if we get a zero if it's in your denominator. That's this whole rule right here. Doesn't X squared, just like we set up here, grow faster than an X? That's why ultimately that limit ends up being a zero. Your number overall will get smaller and smaller. So if we ever get a limit of infinity, that means the numerator is growing faster. If we ever get a limit of zero, that means your denominator is growing faster. And if we ever get a constant, then they are growing at the same rate. So as long as we get a limit that is not zero, that means they are growing at the same rate. All right, so go to this page, or go to this set of problems, go to the first one. We wanna compare these to see which one grows faster. So the way we're gonna set this up initially is we're gonna set up a limit limit as x goes to infinity. It's like they're gonna race, 
and we're going to square off e to the x and x squared, and we're going to erase them. So we're basically setting up a L'Hopital's rule problem from the from the first page. What we would hopefully understand is e to the x is going to get larger and larger and larger. So think about what e to the x looks like. And then here's what x squared is going to look like. These both go to infinity. They're bigger and bigger and bigger. So because of that, we could do L'Hopital's rule with this. So the minute as x goes to infinity, the derivative of the numerator is e to the x. Your denominator is 2x. These both would continue to get larger and larger and larger and larger. Two times a billion, two times two billion would just still get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we do it one more time. Still get e to the x in the numerator. I now get two in my denominator. Now my denominator is always two. So if my numerator is going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, then wouldn't overall the value be going towards infinity? All right, follow that line of thinking. So what we just found is when we set up this problem, our answer when we race these two guys to infinity was an infinity. That tells you that your numerator is growing faster. The numerator was e to the x, so he wins our race. Okay. Skip number two for a second. We just we want to explore e to the x for a little while. So number three, we go to number three, the same thing. Take limit as x goes to infinity. We have e to the x over an x plus a three. These both will get bigger and bigger and bigger as our x's get larger. So there's our beautiful L'Hopital's rule set up. So take your derivatives, e to the x over a one. Notice again, your denominator is not going to change, but the numerator is going to get larger and larger and larger. So overall, the value is going to get bigger. That means whatever was in your numerator wins. So e to the x, victorious again. All right. Number four. E to the x, there he is again. He's feeling good about himself. Winning a lot of races. Now he's going to face an x cubed, right? x cubes are fast. So definitely these grow unbounded. They both get larger. If we take their derivatives, predictably, these both also get larger and larger and larger. As does e to the x and 6x. So we take one more derivative. We ultimately, in this one, get e to the x over a 6. At that step, if your numerator never changes, but your numerator, sorry, your denominator never changes, the numerator continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Infinity. And once again, since e to the x is on the top, our limit is infinity. E to the x is going to win. All right, real quick, number five. Or, I'm sorry, I had a 4b in here. Let's take e to the x and race him versus x to the 1,000th. Because wouldn't we agree x to the 1,000th is super fast, right? Like think about 10 to the 1,000th very quick. All right, do that. Maybe I overshot it with x to the 1,000th for what I want you to see. Oh, that's cool. I anticipate that one. All right, this is what I want you to see. <clears throat> okay, who do we think wins here? Either that or either. Okay, good. Everybody here said e to the x. Hopefully everybody at home still thinks e to the x is going to win. <clears throat> Hopefully you didn't go all the way through that. 
if you did, you're going to be there for a while, right? Because if we're going to take this derivative 1,000 times, eventually you'll get there. But wouldn't this eventually become some sort of a constant where your e to the x is going to continue to grow? So e to the x should win. Now, I tried to do 1,000 on the calculator. It's a little too big. Let's use 100. Doesn't x to the 100th also grow incredibly fast? So if I go to this on the calculator, just to kind of show what this means by growing faster. Let me go. Uh, notice what I put. E to the x is the first one. That's the one that we say wins. And we say x to the 100th. I'm going to use 100th is going to lose. So if I go to my table, <clears throat> notice at the beginning, Here's e to the x, right? At 2, e to the x is small. This is huge already. So isn't x to the 100th? Oh, maybe I shot it too much already. Here's what I promise you. Eventually, as we were to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, maybe I should have picked a smaller number. It should give me an error any moment now. The e to the x is going to end up passing over whatever that x to the 100th value is going to be. Maybe. I promise it does. We all get the gist here. I'll uh, scroll on for the next five minutes. Oh, there we go. We'll say this error is bigger than this error. But at some point, and it doesn't take long, um, but e to the x will eventually overtake and start giving you bigger values than that x to the 10th. Okay? So here's what we kind of want to know. Because long term, do we really want to be setting up all these limits and doing these Lopatel rule problems? All right, probably not. So what we want to know is we start creating a bit of a hierarchy with these. And e to the x will always, we kind of put these in order from slowest to fastest, will always be, so let's say this is an x to the 100th, it's always going to be a regular old algebraic function. Okay. Then. Uh, you don't necessarily need to write this down because we already know this a little bit. Let's say I said x to the fourth over x cubed. Use your old rules. What is the limit of this problem? x to the fourth over x cubed as x goes to infinity. What is that limit? Infinity. So that means which one is growing, the one on top or bottom faster? Top. So x to the fourth grows faster than x cubed basically because of the degrees. So like if I give you an x to the tenth, that's slower than x to the hundredth, but it would be faster than x to the fourth. x to the fourth, we just saw is faster than x cubed. So if we're comparing just similar types, these algebra functions, the exponent will tell us which one is going to grow the fastest, but e to the x will beat all of them. Okay? All right, now jump back to number two. Let me make sure. We'll, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, let's, let's go back to number two. Go back to number two. We have limit. As x goes to infinity, now e to the x is going to take a rest, and we're going to do x squared ln of x. Remember what natural log of x looks like. It looks like this, so it does grow forever. This does give us infinity over infinity, so we'll take our derivative. So we get 2x on top, 1 over x in our denominator. You're going to want to simplify this real quick, so this becomes 2x cubed over a 1. If we now say, what is the limit of this as x goes to infinity, this 2x cubed over a1, we have a cube in our numerator. We don't have any degree in our denominator, so this has to be an infinity, telling us that the function on top is faster. So x squared is faster than the natural log of x. So the natural log of x, remember what he looks like? I kind of didn't expand the, too far to the right here. Because it looks like it's increasing pretty quickly, but remember how the natural log of x then flattens out and it goes to infinity. It just does it really, 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 really slowly. So he tries real hard. He's just not a very fast guy. And natural logs will lose to any algebraic function. All right. They try very hard, but they're just not very good. All right, so now let's go to number five. E to the x is back. Somebody, yeah, Devonshi, question? Hold on, let me turn you on. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So why was it 2x cubed? Two, why was it 2x cubed? 
Number two. Number two. Number two. Sorry. Oh, oh, I see. So when I simplify this, oh, maybe it was one over x. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because this should have been the 2x gets multiplied by the reciprocal of this. Yeah, you're right. So it's 2x squared. Yeah, thank you. It's still going to get all the same stuff, but yeah, definitely just 2x squared. All right, so now number five. We're going to take this e to the x, who seems invincible, and we're going to raise him versus 4 to the x. See what you think for that one, because I'm going to put it on the calculator. All right, this one could keep you busy for a while, right? If you don't kind of write, and plus, let's see if you actually know this derivative, right? Uh, this should definitely give you an infinity over infinity. So let's remember that. And then we need to take our derivative. So e to the x, pretty simple. Remember, 4 to the x is an exponential function, so it repeats itself just like x, e to the x, but we get the little extra times the natural log of 4. You remember that? When we do that, wouldn't that still give you an infinity over an infinity? So, all right, let's do the derivative one more time. That's to give us e to the x on top again. Wouldn't the 4 to the x still be there? And now we're going to get another times ln of 4. So now we have two ln of 4s in our denominator. Will we ever stop getting an infinity over an infinity here? No. So this is now a problem. So what we want to understand with these, and I'll show you on the calculator, when we're comparing exponential functions, so this is an exponential function, this is an exponential function. Do you remember what E was approximately as a base? Good, 2.71 versus four. So if we took these two numbers, raised them to the same exact power, so they're both exponential functions, but a 2.71 versus a four, would we think that the 2.71 wins? Trick question. We asked it. So let's look. This is e to the x. This is 2 to the x. So here's one. What we want to identify is, is the gap between these increasing throughout? Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it increasing throughout considerably? We're already scientific notation right here. This is 22,000. So the 4 to the x grows faster than e to the x. And while we're on it, since this is kind of what we ultimately want to get to, just looking at them and identifying it, let's say I put a 6 to the x in here. So let's keep doing this. I don't want that to be the second function. So now let's go to our table. So we already said the red is going to be faster than the blue. Is now the black numbers, is the gap between the black and the red getting bigger and bigger and bigger as well? Yeah. So when we're comparing exponentials to exponentials, whichever has the bigger base is going to win. So in this case, 4 to the x is going to win. Lopatel's rule wouldn't have gotten us there. We want to just recognize, as we create this little chart or this little line of who's fastest, e to the x will lose to 4 to the x. But 4 to the x would lose to 5 to the x, and then like 100 to the x would beat all of them, so on and so forth. So that if we just start cranking these out, comparing these, we really, here's kind of our hierarchy for now, anyway. All right, and then we don't have to do Lopatel's rule, we just want to be able to look at these. What this chapter gets into is infinite sequences, infinite series. So we want to be doing this a lot, finding limits as we go to infinity, and this is going to kind of create that opportunity to make these a little bit shorter. Okay? All right, so um, yeah, that's pretty much all of them. Well, if we do this one real quick, this one I want you to see. So a root x squared plus a 5 divided by an x. All 
what we really want to do is depend on our rules. All right. So this is kind of what we want to depend on. So understand, this is a little trickier one maybe than I should, but this is a half power. If we really wanted to simplify this, what, so, so clearly in your denominator, your power is a one. But if I have a highest degree within the parentheses of a two, and then that's going to get raised to the power of one half, isn't this really, ultimately, if we were to kind of clean all this up, do some Pascal's triangle fun stuff, don't these both have powers of one? So your coefficients become your limits, which are one. What that means is that these are growing at the same rate. If we get a limit that is not zero, they are growing at the same rate. All right. One might always be bigger, but they're going to grow at the same rate. All right, and real quick, just like every common log that we've done throughout the course of the year, when we compare these, so when we put the log base 3 of x over log base 6 of x, we want to rewrite these first. So the little change of base formula, so that's log base 3 of x rewritten. In your denominator, rewrite the log base 6 of x. When we do that, hopefully we see then that the net, let, let's show this one just to make sure we understand this next step. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of my denominator then. So I just multiply by the reciprocal. Notice how these guys cancel. So what that fraction has reduced to is the natural log of 6 over the natural log of 3. Tell me what that, write down what that is. People always get stumped because of the natural logs there. If it was just 6 over 3 as x goes to infinity, wouldn't it just be 6 over 3 or 2? So those are both numbers. The limit of any constant is your number. Is that constant? So that is your limit. And since this is not infinity, it's a non-zero limit. These grow at the same rate. So logs grow very, very slow, whether it's natural log, common log. Exponentials grow very fast. So if you can just walk out of here understanding this, then overall you're pretty good. Right. But eventually the 100 of the x and the exponential functions will meet their match. But today is not that day. All right. Okay, so that's that. Um, yeah, if you have any questions regarding the polar thing, if you look at the review, look, got ready for the test, or if you're planning to, see me tomorrow morning. Uh, that'd be a great time to kind of go over all that. But your test is not going to be until Wednesday. Okay. Okay, that's it. At home, go. All right. Have a good night.